Hi, welcome back to the Success Portal. This is Dr. Franklin on the Success Portal. Today I will be talking to you about the bitter pill of failure. So thus far, I have been presenting a lot of information and a lot of motivational videos on how to be successful in life and what you need to do in order to be successful. And in one particular video, I talked about the success mindset. And one important thing I'd said in that video is that successful people do not have a plan B or a plan C. They only have a plan A and their plan A is to succeed and they don't move from that and they don't waver from that. They just focus on succeeding and they harness all their energy into that. But what happens in life is that sometimes we go through detours, sometimes we have to go over different hurdles and there are roadblocks towards our final destination uh, of uh, success and those hurdles and roadblocks and detours come in the form of failures and on your way to succeeding you will encounter some sort of setback so what exactly is failure so i went onto the internet to look at the merriam webster uh, dictionary to find out what exactly is the definition for failure? So the Merriam-Webster uh, Dictionary defines, defines failure as non-performance of an assigned or expected action. It also defines failure as a falling short of one's goals. And uh, one thing that happens is um, after studying about success reading books on success successful people you know when you actually don't achieve your goal after putting in a lot of effort it's very difficult to accept that you did not make it but it's important to note that failure is actually a way of getting to succeed failure is a good teacher and we learn a lot uh, through experience in life. So it's different from reading a book about something and actually experiencing it and having a first-hand account. Experience is such a good teacher, especially when it comes to issues dealing with success and issues to do with acquiring skills and issues to do uh, with uh, practicing in a particular specialty or profession. One would almost say that not succeeding at something the first time is actually necessary because you learn a lot and you derive a lot from not making it. So Henry Ford said that uh, when you fail, it is just an opportunity for you to begin again and to begin not just to begin again, but to begin again more intelligently and I paraphrase so that particular experience where you do not uh, achieve what you desire is simply a learning experience and it should be treated as such so Winston Churchill uh, say that success is not final failure is not fatal it is the courage to continue that counts. And Charles Barkley said, if you are afraid of failure, you don't deserve to be successful. So some people are afraid to step out because they are afraid to fail. And according to Charles Barkley, if you are afraid of failure, then you cannot succeed because failure involves taking a risk, the risk that you might potentially be disappointed. 
And I like another quote, which Michael Jordan said concerning failure. He said, I can accept failure. Everyone fails at something, but I can't accept not trying. So people are afraid to fail and they stop trying. It's very important to step out, to take a risk, because everything is a risk. And Jim Ron said that simply existing is a risk because you can die. And he said that this life is a risk because you won't come out of it alive. So you need to take risks each and every day. Obviously not foolish risks, but calculated risks. And if you are afraid to step out, you will never, ever, ever succeed in life. So the question always becomes, how much do you want to succeed? How hungry are you uh, for success? Because that will determine how much effort you will need to put in. That will determine how much risk you will need to take in order to achieve what you desire. So as I mentioned that um, failure is a good teacher and uh, experience teaches you a lot about life as opposed to just reading up uh, uh, stuff in a book. So I just wanted to share with you my own experience that I had in terms of failure and how I dealt with it. And um, what happened to me is that I was going for uh, a diving uh, lessons and I wanted to get my diving license. Um, and there are different levels of uh, diving um, in terms of uh, how, how deep you can dive um, in the sea and there are different levels of training for that. So basically I was going for like the entry level and I had certain difficulties in performing some of the skills because in order for you to be issued with a license you should be able to perform certain diving skills which are extremely uh, important because you need those skills in order to navigate your way at sea and you need those skills because they can potentially be uh, their life-saving skills that you need to uh, be proficient at and the, your trainer cannot give you that license if they feel that you are not uh, competent and you might put your life at risk if they allow you to go out to sea or in deep ri rivers to dive there and you cannot perform those skills because you might potentially drown or uh, have a fatal accident and die. So there was one particular skill which was very basic and that one is uh, clearing the mask. So what happens is that while you are underwater you get to take off your mask and when you take off your mask it fills up with water and then you put your mask back on. So what actually happens when you put your mask back on is that you can't see anymore because the water is uh, impairing your ability to see through uh, the mask. So what they expect you to do is then to be able to clear the mask of water underneath, under, underwater. So you can't get out of the water to clear your mask. You have to do it underneath, uh, underwater, and then and then be able to see through your mask. So this seems very, uh, it looks like it's very easy, but if you've never done it, uh, you'll be like, oh no, this is very easy. But the fact that you have to clear your mask full of water underwater makes it difficult because the water, what happens is while you're trying to clear the mask, the water seeps in again. So I had great difficulty in doing that. And, uh, my instructor had to just call off the session. And this is one of the basic skills, the ones that you start up with, uh, besides being able, obviously, to swim, and you, you won't be able to dive if you can't swim. So I couldn't do that. And I was frustrated because I'm someone who's like so goal-directed and, you know, result oriented And here I am not being able to do a simple skill. And 
uh, my instructor was like, sorry, you spent too much time on this. We've got too many skills to practice. We've got too many skills to go through. If you can't do this, we just have to reschedule it for another day. But part of my frustration was the fact that we ended the session and I could not figure out why I could not clear my mask. So I went home and I felt so defeated. I felt like, oh my word, you know, I've been able to achieve other things in life. I just couldn't clear my mask. And does this mean this is the end of my diving experience? And I started going onto the internet to check uh, and I googled clearing a mask uh, during a diving lesson. How do you do it? And when I did that, I discovered that uh, many students, many people were trying to learn diving. This is one of the things that they actually struggled with. And when I, when I saw that on the internet, when I saw that also on YouTube videos that people struggle with this thing, I felt like I'm not the only one. And that was kind of comforting for me. I felt like, oh my word, I'm not the only one struggling with that. But not only did I learn that I was not the only one struggling with that and uh, derive that as a source of comfort in a way that I didn't feel like I'm, I'm hopeless, I started reading around that and I, I, I discovered how to clear the mask. So what I did is I went on to a diving uh, shop, went on to buy a mask, an actual mask, and I asked the lady who was there about her experience of diving. And she told me that the whole experience of diving, it's, it's people vary and I must not be too hard on myself. And that was really comforting for me. And when I got home, I had to get it right. I, I just could not accept failure. So I filled, the, I filled my, uh, my basin with some water and put on the mask and dipped my face under water, opened up the mask, allowed it to fill up with water. And I started practicing clearing the mask according to what I had watched on YouTube and what I had read up on the internet. And I actually managed to clear my mask. I was so excited. I know... You may not understand if you've never done diving before, but for me, that was a make or break thing. I just had to clear my mask. And once I was able to clear my mask uh, under a, a water in a basin and also in a bathtub, I was so excited. I rebooked my my diving lesson. I went back there. I was so confident and I told them I'm going to be able to do it. And when I got there, uh, we had the lesson and lo and behold, I managed to clear my mask and it was a new instructor now and she was so excited for me and she was clapping and she was so happy. The mood, my mood was so elevated and there were other skills that I had to do on the particular day which were way more difficult like holding your breath and uh, for 30 seconds underwater without actually breathing in and also uh, swimming a long distance, a, 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 a kind of 30, I'm not sure how many meters, but I had to swim a certain um, distance underwater uh, without actually taking a breath in. And I managed to do that and so many other skills that I had to do and I, and I was able to do that and do some of the skills I'd never done them before in my entire life, but I was, I was able to perform them because I was uh, so confident at that time because I could clear my mask. I know you may not understand this, you know, but um, for me, it was a make or break session. And to cut the long story short, and it is a long story, uh, I managed to succeed and I was given my, uh, my dive. I, I, I managed to attain uh, the entry level uh, diving license. And it's it's been amazing. and. And, and diving is just a new experience for me. It's something that I really wanted to do and um, I'm still at the, at the preliminary stages. I'm still learning. But this is the story I just want to tell you of what happened to me in terms of overcoming that failure experience. And the, my initial instructor was so proud of me that I never gave up and I continued to push forward. And I didn't stop even when I got those skills 
I went on again. I, I kept on coming again for more lessons, how to learn uh, buoyancy, how to uh, hover in one area when diving. So it was an amazing experience for me. And I still want to learn more. And this is not just like the one failure experience that I had, but there have been others. And my the formula has remained the same. Uh, never give up because when you fail at something and you give up, then you become a failure. But when you fail at something and you keep trying, you keep pushing, eventually you are going to break through. And especially when you think about what you're doing, ask yourself pertinent questions. Ask yourself, why didn't I get it right? Why, what did I do wrong? Ask yourself those questions. And also ask other people who are doing that particular thing. Ask them, how did you make it? What did you do? What is your secret? What is your formula? Read up stuff on the internet. Go on to YouTube. There is a massive amount of information on the internet that can assist you and people share their experiences and you can actually glean a lot from those people's experiences. So I like the words of Michael Jordan where he says, I can accept failure. Everyone fails at something but i can't accept not trying you just have to try and i can tell you as you continue to try and try and try and try suddenly the light will come on and you will achieve that goal that you've been trying for so many years lastly i just want to end with uh the short account of uh, Colonel Sanders. Many of you know it, the story, the founder of uh, Kentucky Fried Chicken, how many times he tried and how many times he was rejected uh, while trying to sell his uh, chicken that had these special uh, flavors and this special recipe. He was rejected so many times until one day people uh, enjoyed his chicken and he he was he became very popular and sometimes it's about uh, not necessarily that you are not good but it's about the timing as well because the time that his recipe became popular in so many homes was at a time i'm told when women were now working and they could not uh, leave their jobs to cook for their families in time so people and families started uh, going out and they started buying uh, fast food at times just to be able to have something on the table in the evening. And that's when Kentucky Fried Chicken became popular at that time. And ever since then, uh, Kentucky Fried Chicken uh, franchises all over the world. It's around the world. I've traveled to Asia. Uh, I've seen it in Asia. I've traveled to uh, parts of South America. I saw it there in Africa, even in poor countries in Africa, poor cities. I've I've been in poor rural South Africa, and they they have Kentucky Fried Chicken even in the most most uh, rural settings. So that just tells you how powerful it is, uh, pushing forward and not allowing temporary setbacks to cause you to be discouraged, and. The lesson here is, in a nutshell, is don't give up. Don't ever give up on a dream and on a goal that you are fully convinced about. Keep pushing forward. Thank you so much for listening to me. This is Dr. Franklin on the Success Portal. And till next time, goodbye.